Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's faves. And I have to get my fave. It's over here. And today, I want to talk to you about one of the rarest of all the Cleveland Dohnani productions, but to my mind, one of the best. I have mentioned it before in another context, but I just want to talk about the disc by itself because this is such a great disc and you are never going to find it. I'm sorry, maybe in streaming services. I always feel so guilty talking about these, but this is a list of my favorites and I have to say what they are. Here it is. You get the Bartok Music for Strings, Percussion, and Celesta, and then the Martineau Concerto for String Quartet and Orchestra, which is one of his thornier Concerto Grosso pieces. It's wonderful, and, and it's, not, it's not, you know, easy listening Martineau at all. It's, it's, it's a tough work and a great work. And then you get the Janicek Capriccio for Piano Left Hand and Chamber Ensemble. The Chamber Ensemble being a flute, a piccolo, two trumpets, three trombones, and a tenor tuba. And a piano left hand. It's such a weird piece, but a wonderful one as well. Now, this disc occurred, well, this was recorded in 1995. And this was right at the heart of the classical music catastrophe, particularly at Universal, when all of the labels were cutting back and all hell was breaking loose and you couldn't find a PR person at the label. They didn't know what they were talking about. And, and Decca had a lot of Cleveland material with Dohnani, and some of it was rather unusual. You know, they were doing, they did Weber and they did all kinds of stuff. They did Charles Ives and Varese and, you know, the stuff that Dohnani and Cleveland could do better than anyone. Really, they could. But they weren't going to release it. And it didn't even show up in the United States. I mean, half of this stuff was never released in the U.S., or if it was, it was released for like five seconds, and they didn't tell anyone about it, and they didn't promote it. And I know, because I would talk to the people at DECA, and, you know, in the U.S., and it's like, well, where is this? I want it. I've seen it in Europe. I see it coming out. You know, you saw the, you know, new release lists and gramophone and whatnot. And it's like, well, where is this? Well, it's not a priority. That was the word you always got. It's not a priority. It's not a priority. They wanted to have, you know, the opera thing or the soloist or the naked lady violinist with the strapless dress. You know, that's the stuff that they were pushing. And hardcore repertoire, interesting repertoire, intelligent couplings, fabulous playing, wonderful sonics. I mean, now. This is also the time when they did stupid things like the Dohnani Ring Cycle, remember, which only made it to two, two installments before they gave up on it. Now, that wasn't stupid because, you know, Dohnani wasn't a great conductor. It was stupid because, A, we didn't need another ring cycle when they had like the Schulte Ring and God knows what else. B, um, he didn't have the singers to do a really great ring cycle. I mean, if you don't have the singers, you're doing it with whoever's around these days. What's the point in doing a ring cycle of all things? And three, they couldn't sell it. They, I mean, it was going to cost them a fortune. So I understood. I understood getting rid of some of the, the weirder projects. But some of these things were really, really valuable. And this was one of them. There was also the Bartok and Ludoslavsky concertos for orchestra. That's just amazing. I mean, it's just great stuff in this legacy. And we desperately need a Dohnani box. This could be one of my, you know, not a Dave's fave. I could make this one of the ripe for reissues. I mean, maybe I'll, I'll catalog it down there too, because it really should never have been deleted. I mean, it really should have been issued and promoted in the first place. But of course, I understand. I understand. What's the market for this? I mean, even, even I'm going to do a talk about this. And, you know, if I do a talk about a Beethoven symphony, everyone's going to look and it's going to get great, great rankings and whatnot. If I talk about this, no one's going to care. It's just the way it is. And it makes me nuts because people should care. And because if you really love classical music, you should be wanting to hear these things. And there may be something marvelous that, that will change your life but you'll never know unless you listen to it. So, first of all, the music for Strings, Percussion, and Celesta, this is one of the great ones ever. I mean, they, they nailed this piece. I saw them do it live at Carnegie Hall. It was the concert before they closed Carnegie Hall for the big renovation, you know, the big, huge renovation. And Isaac Stern played the Beethoven Violin Concerto like a quarter-tone sharp on the second half. It was not the best Beethoven I've ever heard. He was, you know, sort of past it at that point. But the Bartok, wow! They just nailed it, and this is, it's every bit 
is audible in this in this performance. The Martineau, as I said, is one of his sort of gnarlier pieces. It's quirky, and and it, it, very very interesting and harmonically challenging and fun to listen to and full of energy and rhythm and, and, and buoyancy as Martineau always is. And then the Janáček Concertino, the Capriccio, pardon me, which is just insane. I mean, for this weird wind ensemble and piano left hand and typical Janacek. And what a wonderful idea to take these these three Slavic works for chamber orchestra kind of things. I mean, you know, they were, uh, the, the Bartok was like a Paul Zacher commission. I mean, maybe the Martineau was too. I don't know. I don't remember. I read the notes so long ago. But it's just a great disc. Just wonderful, interesting music making and intelligent couplings and it's continuously fresh and different and unusual. And I know most of us listen to classical music because we want what is usual. That's what kind of defines a classic, right? Something that's really usual. But no, I, I want something that isn't. And I know some of you feel that way anyway. So for all of you out there and, and those of you who are newbies or people who think, you know, that, that you're not up to it, oh, you are. Oh, you, you are so up to it. Just listen to the stuff. Don't have any preconceptions. Play it. Listen. See what you think. You know, the, the bar talk was the soundtrack to The Shining. You already have heard it. And if you can deal with that, enjoy. you're going to enjoy the other pieces just as well. They're freaky. Good. We could use freaky. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.